All right, what's up, guys? My name is Zach, and this week I've been driving the 2023 Lexus LC500 convertible. Up front is a 5.0 liter V8, and down below is a 10 speed automatic transmission. Now, I am super excited to be driving and filming and loving this LC500. This has been probably one of my, if not my, favorite press car I've ever had the privilege of driving around for a week. I'm excited to share all of those reasons why with you today. But before we get on to anything else, if you would like to submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me, you can do so through a quick and easy submission form found on my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. But let's get back to that five liter V8 under the hood, putting out 471 horsepower. Well, that is the creme de la creme, the beautiful centerpiece of the LC500. Now you can find these vehicles in hybrids. They get a V6 turbo hybrid setup from like the LS500 that I reviewed, that sort of setup. This is what you want. You want the five liter V8. It's fast. Yes, it is very fast. That's not the reason why. The reason you want the five liter V8 is just for the sound. I mean, how can you go wrong with that? You really, truly, honestly cannot. Not to mention it's great sound. These engines are incredibly reliable and incredibly stout. And these engines hold up even under boost, even under pressure, even putting out horsepowers they weren't intended to, these engines last. So that is a beautiful thing to see in the LC500. Like I said, paired to it is a 10 speed automatic. The shifting has been awesome. It works up through the gears through seventh gear pretty quickly and then really only uses eight, nine and 10 for like highway or higher speed cruising. Without taking it on the highway, I never saw ninth or 10th gear. That being said, downshifts are really, really quick and I have been very much enjoying this transmission. Last but not least, this is rear wheel drive, of course, but it does have an added goodie, which is a Yamaha limited slip differential out at the back. So that is an option for the LC500. However, it's a $460 option. Go for it. Definitely do it if you're specking out your LC500. Real world fuel economy. Not pretty, but I have been averaging 17.1 miles of the gallon, which isn't bad. Albeit, this is being relatively nice and only doing pulls every four or five minutes instead of every minute. Just kidding. I, I've been driving this car nicely and it has been doing about 17 miles to the gallon, which isn't bad for a big throaty V8. So I actually am pretty happy with that number. So how does it feel to actually drive the LC500? The biggest downside of the driving feel is how large it is. This is a long and large coupe. Took a little bit of getting used to. Now I actually am very comfortable driving it, but that nose out front is a little daunting. You can't really see where it is. And the doors swing out incredibly wide. So parking can sometimes be an issue. But all of that, of course, melts away when you put your foot into it. You hear that five liter V8. The steering is fantastic. It handles really, really well. It has different drive modes. So in sport mode, you do feel all the bumps, but in comfort mode, it is really, really good at soaking them up. So a sort of best of both worlds scenario there. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a digital gauge cluster. I do get this ring around the outside. That's a physical real ring, but everything behind it is digital. I really like the fact that these gauges change when you switch to different drive modes like Sport S and Sport S Plus, and I can change the information found in the center little gauge. I normally leave this on what gear I'm in. I don't really find the other information too interesting, 
but definitely nice features here in the Lexus LC500. On the left and right of the steering wheel, I do have these two little knobs. Off to the left is my traction control off and snow mode, and then off to the right, I have my different drive modes. So like I mentioned with the gauge cluster, I do have Sport and Sport Plus. I also have Normal, I can set a Custom mode, I have Comfort mode and Eco mode. So all of my mode options right here on the bezel. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my selectors for that gauge cluster screen, as well as voice commands, phone options, and volume. And off to the right, I have my cruise control options. This does have adaptive cruise, as well as skip track. The steering wheel is leather wrapped with perforated leather. I really like the feeling of it. I've been pleasantly enjoying it. And around the back, I do have paddle shifters, which I have really been enjoying. I drive with my left pointer finger always on the bottom of the downshift paddle because the crackles, pops, and sounds this car makes downshifting into third and then into second are exquisite. And I love that sound. Off to the left, I do have a climate control vent, my gauge dimmer switch and trip odometer, and then I have my trunk release, head up display adjustment and gas cap release. This does have a head up display I don't really pay attention to. Moving on to the door, we do get some really nice red fabric as well as three different memory seat options, power mirrors and power windows. Moving into the center, this is the infotainment system. This is the biggest downside of the LC500 by far. Few things, first of all, the screen is kind of far away and under this hood, it's almost like they were trying to hide it. The infotainment system itself feels a little bit dated and it's very chunky and blocky to use. It's not very user friendly. The biggest thing is that I don't have any buttons for my heated seats or ventilated seats or headrests that we'll talk about in a second. So I have to go through all these different menus to find some of those climate controls. I don't like that. I wish I had a button for my heated seat. That being said, I do have Apple CarPlay and here is the backup camera of which is most certainly not at the quality that I would expect out of a $113,000 car. Something I really wish it had was a 360 camera, like I said, with those driving dynamics. This car is big, and I wish I had some type of nose camera or front camera to see how close I'm getting, because not all parking stops register on the parking sensors. Off to the right of that, I do have an analog clock. I personally love analog clocks in cars because I don't look at them or use them, but it's just a nice luxury feature that base model Corollas don't get. So it always makes me feel special. But what I recently learned is that my girlfriend actually hates analog clocks in cars because she thinks that it's dangerous to look at while driving. And I have to agree with her standpoint. Not that I have to, I'm just saying that I am. I don't have to agree with everything she says but I happen to. Coming down the center console, we do have our hazard switch and a climate control vent, which will absolutely blast your water bottle if you have it in the cup holder. Then I have some of the climate controls. I do have dual zone, and these climate controls are fine, but the fact that it's split between half the screen, half these buttons, it just makes for a really frustrating experience. Then I do get a CD player. Lexus holding onto the CD players. Besides Subaru, they're one of the last companies to do so. And then we have the cup holder. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the LC500 convertible. And of course it fails. Didn't expect it to pass, but whoop the flippin' do. <laughs> Then off to the left, I have the shifter. At first, I really didn't like the shifter because its guts and core and the way it operates is from the Toyota Prius. Look at the Prius shifter, look at this shifter. It even uses the same diagram. They just dressed this one up with some nice leather and plastic touches for the LC500. At first, that really bothered me, but now driving the car, now that I'm used to it, I actually quite like it. There's something about getting in starting it, putting the top down, left and back, and you're in drive. It's almost like you're engaging the hyper boost in a fighter jet or something. So I've actually grown to really like it. Down below, I do have the auto holding brake, which is really, really nice. And then off to the right, we have our radio controls. Radio, media, and menu are fine. I wish I had a quick button for the climate to jump to that screen and I don't get that. However, down below is the dreaded, terrible Lexus trackpad. 
I've reviewed a bunch of vehicles with this trackpad in the past, and I've always said that I hate it, it's awful and terrible, but I gave it the benefit of the doubt because in those vehicles, I only had them for one, two, maybe three hours at a time, which isn't enough time to really get to know. And so a lot of people said, you learn to live with it. It's actually not so bad when you figure it out. Well, seven days has passed since I got this car and I still hate it with a burning passion. It never does what you want it to do. It's never accurate. And while driving, it makes everything very frustrating. However, the caveat is for 2024, Lexus got rid of it. So Lexus fixed their problem, which I am so happy to see. So awesome that Lexus does listen to the consumers and what people want and don't want. And this was certainly something people don't want. So they took it away and actually gave it a more traditional system for the 2024 model year. Thank you, Lexus. Down below that, we do have this little opening cubby, which are the power roof controls. I love this for two reasons. First of all, you can use it as a hand rest when it's closed for using the trackpad. But the other reason is the fact that flipping this up and hitting the switch is like I'm priming missiles in a submarine. It gives me the coolest feeling when I'm ready to put the top down, flip it up, boom, right there. And we will talk about the top when we talk about the exterior. Then we do have an opening little cubby. I guess this could be construed as cup holders as well. This also fails the big friggin' bottle test, and I know everyone seems to be a fan of the fail sound, so here you go. But you can slide this closed for a nice clean look, or you can slide it back and then open the center console, and this is where you'll find your USB inputs for the radio. And I like how clean, simple, and nice this really looks. Then we gotta talk about the seats. The seats are heated, ventilated, power, and memory, which are all awesome features, and they are incredibly comfortable. However, they have a really, really cool feature, which is heated headrests. So when you have the top down on a cold night, or I guess really anytime, you can turn on blowers in the headrest to blow hot air at your neck. I know Mercedes calls this the air scarf, because it acts like a scarf while you're driving to keep your neck and head warm. And it actually really, really works. So that is a very, very nice feature of the LC500 seats and particular to the convertible. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. We'll do a back seat review, but I'm gonna do this in the comfort of my own home because this is gonna be embarrassing. So I've decided to do this back seat review in the comfort of my own garage to mainly save myself from public humiliation. The reason being is that these back seats are so incredibly tiny, I don't think they're really meant for humans. But I told myself four years ago that if a car has back seats, I will review it. And so I eat my words every single day. But there is one thing in the way before we do that physically, and that is this little wind bar. This wind bar is basically to muffle the noise that the wind would normally make, kind of keep the interior from blowing everything everywhere. If you have longer hair, helps keep that sort of intact, I guess, if you want to say. However, the rep that actually dropped this vehicle off said that this rear thing has never been removed. So in order to do so, you basically pull out a tab there, and then I guess you come around here and pull out another tab, and then it lifts out. So we can come in here and then detach the seat belt, start moving this all the way up. And now, once this is done, for the first time in this particular vehicle's life, someone is going to sit in the back seat. So up and over, as they say, sort of drop myself down here and I'm in. <laughs> These seats actually sit up so much higher than the back seat. So right now my eyesight is over the front windshield. These definitely were not designed for people in mind. Now, some people say that these are here for insurance reasons to get cheaper insurance, but I think if you're insuring a $113,000 luxury convertible, back seats probably aren't your biggest concern or saving $10 a year probably isn't a concern either. 
The seats themselves are decently comfortable, but they're straight up and down in the back. I feel like I'm sitting, like, ready to do, like, a roller coaster. I'm expecting the bars to sort of... You know, that sort of thing. Um, not good. But I said I would do every back seat I physically can, so here I am. So we're on the very back of the LC500. We do actually get a trunk, which not all convertibles still give you a trunk. Now, I came over to this side because it took me a little while to find it, but there is a little button right here that allows you to pop open the trunk. Now, this is my camera filming equipment. And as you can see, it takes up a majority of the trunk. So let me pull this out. I also have these sweet car magazines from Ireland. Thank you, Alex, for these. Went to Europe recently and got me some cool magazines to geek over European cars. And then we do have this little bag. This is for that wind visor. And then we can pull this up and that is where your battery is located. Very important to know because within the first 20 minutes that I had this car, I actually took it to my allergy shot place and there was an old man in the parking lot in a Toyota Avalon that needed a jump. So I pulled up with the nose of the car and couldn't find the battery and luckily someone else was able to jump him but that was very embarrassing so the battery is actually mounted in the middle in the back which is very interesting to see other than that pretty small trunk but what you would expect out of a luxury coupe like this now we got to talk about the looks and i mean come on ladies and gentlemen unless you're blind deaf and dumb this is an amazing looking car what it really looks like to me in my humble opinion, is a concept car that actually made it out alive. The giant exaggerated wheels, the sharp edges, the curving lines. This looks like something that you would see on a spinning pedestal and never actually see on the road. Well, I can tell you for the last seven days, this thing has been on the road. And that to me is wild. It's very rare that cars end up looking anything like their concept but somehow Lexus was able to do that. Also with the exterior, here's the power top operation. And honestly, it is a pretty quick top. It is all power. It's all done through that button we talked about earlier. I don't like the way it looks with the top up, but I don't think I've ever liked a convertible with the top up unless it's a hard top convertible. So here it is, that operation, in case you'd like to see it. I'm a big fan. I love convertibles life is good speaking of the top i am really really impressed with how quiet it is when the top is up top up windows up you don't really get much wind noise now it is pouring rain particularly while i'm filming this portion of the video and so you can hear the rain that's going to be in any car really even my mazda 3 you can hear the rain hitting the tin roof so the fact that i can hear it through the soft top isn't that crazy but I am really thoroughly impressed at speed driving around with the top and windows up how really, really quiet the cabin is. That's what I expect out of Lexus's hard tops and that's what I get out of Lexus's soft tops, which is impressive. Speaking of the soft top here today on this rainy day, I returned from a review to the soft top beating up unlike any soft top I've ever seen. It's just mesmerizing to look at. And so if you do unfortunately have to drive your LC500 with the top up, not its preferred environment, don't worry because it is going to still be a nice luxury driving experience. Or if you just wanna shut yourself off from the world, you're gonna get really nice sound deadening from this soft top. So now with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts what do i think having driven the lexus lc 500 convertible for the last seven days well this experience has been nothing short of amazing brilliant and beautiful there are downsides to this car of course there's downsides to every car the back seats dreadful do not use them and do not anticipate using them. Similarly, the trunk space also isn't great. It fits my film equipment, but that's literally it. If you try to transport two basketballs, you're out of luck. The infotainment is quite dreadful. However, like I said, Lexus has gone and righted their wrongs for the 2024 model year. 
So that's not really a complaint anymore. But even through those little complaints, even if they were big complaints, even if I saw the Lexus LC500 kick a puppy, I would still love it because of that driving experience, because of that engine, because of that noise. <laughs> Because of how this car has made me feel. Not only have I been the talk of the neighborhood for the last seven days, with almost every neighbor coming up to me at some point saying, nice car. I wanna get real for a second. The week that I had this car, I have a stomach virus. Not really quite sure what, but I've been in and out of immediate care, seeing doctors, physicians, and specialists. And don't worry, I'm okay now. But I hate hospitals. I don't like going to them. I don't like being stuck in a hospital bed. It's very scary to me. And so I had an extended stay at the immediate care the other day, and I was feeling really low. I was feeling bad. I was feeling crummy. But then I walked out into the parking lot, and I saw the LC500. And this is a real video I took in that moment because I knew it was a special moment. My feelings went away. I smiled. I laughed, I chuckled to myself. It made me feel good. And on the way home, you bet your bottom dollar I was using those paddles. I had the top down music blaring. I was living it up. And so what was otherwise a terrible and crummy day, the LC500 fixed that, it made me happy. And for the first time in nearly 48 hours since I had been ill, I smiled and that is worth the price tag alone. This car makes me happy. This car fills me with joy. Coming out to this car in the morning, starting it up on that cold start, like you saw in the beginning, that's what this car is all about. I can look past the infotainment, the back seat, the trunk, the price tag, whatever. As I grow up, my own personal happiness has taken a front seat, a priority in my life. And the LC500 allows me to achieve that. I love this thing. Lexus is supposed to come and pick it up later this afternoon and take it back, but I'm desperately trying to give them reasons not to. <laughs> so far, the argument of I don't wanna hasn't really panned out in my favor, but maybe I'll try some other things. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Lexus, Mama, and Drive Shop for making this video happen. We gotta end this video in the only way that I know possible, and that's with putting the top down. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.